Two cousins on the road find out what drives the industry that has taken America by storm. From mom and pop shops to the industry leaders discover why these business owners do what they do and how they've become successful in such a young, diverse, and lucrative industry that is estimated in $8 billion in revenue. Join us for an exclusive sneak peek behind the scenes of the vape industry. This is the Mitten Road Show. Alright you guys, we're here at Big Time Vapors, 5460 Meredith Street in Kalamazoo. We're going to talk to our guy Dre over here, he's the owner, awesome dude, he's doing a lot of crazy things. We're, we're going to kind of pick his brain a little bit, see how we started, see what he's doing next. You guys ready? It's time. Alright you guys, today we're in Kalamazoo, we're at Big Time Vapors. My buddy Dre here is the owner, he's going to talk to you a little bit about everything, what he does, his products, how they've started, where he started and what his next projects are. Hey guys, I'm Andre with Big Time Vapors. Um, also make the Lit Vape Juice brand out of Kalamazoo, Michigan, and um, I'm here to be interviewed today by my boy Jamie. My, my favorite question, and our, one of our first questions always is, where'd you come up with the name, Big Time Vapors? It fits, I'm 6'5", 350 pounds. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, it was literally, it was a, it was a, a name that we used to use for um, uh, online gamer tag. Okay. We used to use big time, so it just kind of fit, just rolled over naturally, fit this, big flavors. Yeah, yeah, Big yeah. guys. Perfect. Yeah, big time. How long have you been open here? This store here, we've been open since August of 2016. Okay. Did you first start with this store, or did you do something else uh, prior? Yeah, grinded it out. Like, most store, like, I think it's a pretty uh, similar store to many in our industry. Um, made some flavors, liked them. Worked out of the house. I got a background in e-commerce, IT, so built a website, did local deliveries. Hustled, 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 grinded, and made enough money to open a place. I love it. I love it. And you're totally right, too. That hustler mentality seems to be something we find a lot yeah, in the industry. It's and all, people we talk to. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people that I've met so far seem to be uh, real ambitious. And a lot don't have a lot of business background either. They just they have a lot of ambition. They're just willing to figure it out. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So what made you decide e-liquid was going to be your next thing? It just, it was the right time. It made sense. The industry was at the right stage where I seen that like, there wasn't a lot of good flavors I felt on the market. Um, especially in our area, Southwest Michigan, there wasn't a lot going on. And we had some flavors that were just really good. So I felt confident in the fact that we could make something out of them. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember when you guys first started too, is all of a sudden out of nowhere, all I heard, big yeah. time vapors, big yeah. time vapors. And it was crazy, it was yeah. awesome. It, it, was, it was overwhelming, because like, I've had other, I've tried other businesses before. I've had some success and of course some failures. And uh, never anything like this. Like, it was scary how fast momentum built. Yeah. It was like, I can't back away from this now if I want to. Like, this is, de it's not, it's no longer my choice. This is bigger than me now. Yeah. Like, that's how it felt. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So you said you had the, the background in like IT and e-commerce. What did you do yeah. right before you were like, you know what, this is it. Big time is what I'm doing. Uh, I was, I had a photography videography studio. I was doing freelance web design. So that background really helped springboard and catapult this on how to already get like proper image pictures or images for my products, uh, website, marketing. But I did uh, like tier one, tier two IT stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, just like all over the IT space pretty much. Yeah. That's awesome to get the, the background in the e-commerce too, and especially being able to do the photos and everything. I mean, yeah, 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 that's... It was like a hundred bucks to get started 
would like what I did probably would have cost if we went out to a firm of twenty grand, but sure. I could just invest time. And yeah, I had the belief in the product, so I did it. You know, and I built you know took all the right photos and built the websites and built the social media presence and now I'm on marketing and just you know barreled ahead. Absolutely. So you have the the other brand lit here too. Tell me a little bit about lit. Where, where did that come from? Lit's my favorite. Fire. It's it's the one that's had the most success. Uh, Lit's a cotton candy and ice cream blend, yeah. and right now there's currently four release flavors: strawberry, grape, raspberry, and orange. And we have a, a tons of other ones slated for this line, but um, yeah, it's lit. Like yeah, yeah, like it's the right word, the right branding, the right flavors. It's just been really successful, and um, yeah, I'm really proud of it. Absolutely. What made you decide to to develop another line outside of your big time uh, name and line? Um, I think it's imperative in business that you do that. I think you have to kind of diversify and like kind of keep throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah, so absolutely. You see a lot of our a lot of our um, colleagues they seem to do this. Um, you guys have done it some yourself, where yeah. you create multiple brands and just kind of fill it out and see what people like. And yeah. Kind of trial and error, and you know this one was the one that stuck the best, so this is where we're at. Yeah, absolutely, and I yeah. I, I agree. I think you had a grand slam with this one. I mean, yeah, I appreciate like it. you said, from from branding to everything, I mean, it's just. And the name. I mean, yeah. I mean, it works perfect. Like, it was the right timing for that word, that name. Um, <laughs> one of our, uh, at one of the expo that I was recently at, I watched him take a picture of the booth and kind of like curse. He was a little upset. And I went and talked to him later. He owns one of the large mod manufacturing companies. And he was finishing doing a line with this name. Really? And I was like, I know I'm on to something because you have like a ton of success and you yeah. thought the same thing. So it was like good validation. Hell yeah. I appreciate yeah. that for sure. What's your favorite? Off the lit line. Strawberry. Strawberry? Strawberry is my favorite. Um, orange is the latest release, so you know how when something's new, you get like that. It's got that new value, so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm vaping a lot of the orange, but strawberry has been. I'm a strawberry vapor. I like strawberry flavors. Yeah, me too. Yeah. If it's got strawberry in I'm probably going to like it. Yeah, yeah. Same. Yeah. That's my favorite. Okay. Yeah. Before lit, uh, with Big Time, what, what was your favorite flavor on Big Time? Because you guys had a different, couple of different products with there as well. Yeah, um, we've got like the Scoops line, the Firestar line, about 50 other flavors, some independent premium line, uh, flavors. Uh, all time favorite? That's a hard one. There's so many that I like. I mean, I know you guys have done a ton. Top, top couple favorite. would be Strawberry and Cream, uh, Icy Hoops um, from our house line, Hoop Dreams is like phenomenal. We sell a ton of that. Um, if I go back to like cereals, Fruity Bedrock, that, that was kind of like the cornerstone flagship. Yes, so, yep, I remember that one. Yeah, um, yeah, those would be it. Then there's some core stuff that's not released yet. Yeah, that's always always, always working. That's always the fun ones. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm making on yep. devices now. Yeah. So aside from your lines, is there anything else that's in your tank regularly from you know different different juice manufacturers at all, or do you kind of stick to you know your own brand, or what you know what do you do? No, I I make everything. Okay. Uh, you have to if if for no other reason, just like to know what other people are doing. Yeah. Like to see what's working for them and what kind of like concoctions are coming up with weird pairings of flavors that mm -hmm. work. Um, right now what I'm vaping is, um, from you guys, always Simming Ship. That's one of my like hands down favorite flavors for years now. Um, squeezed, the apple, that's, uh, just that's you try that. Yeah, yeah, that was, that's, that's it's, really, really it's good. It's oddly refreshing how good it is. And yeah. I don't usually, like there's only two like, Two juices on the market that I've had, whether they do like uh, mint, menthol, or cool out of that I like. Yeah. It's Arcane and that squeeze line. Okay. Yeah, just those, yeah, those are what I'm on right now. Yeah, I was down here like what, six months ago and I picked up a bottle of the cane from you and I went through that really quick. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, got, I got a beta yet to try. There's, there's, well, not a beta, there's a, there's a line with that flavor. Okay. That, um, it's, it's sitting over there right now. I got you before we leave. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I love coming down here. I always, get, I always get some new juice. Yeah. <laughs> now let's get into the business side of things. What was the the hardest part about starting up? Oh, hmm. I mean, there was multiple pieces that were hurdles. Um, it's obviously technology was the one for me. Doing the, the research and development, figuring out what flavors to run with, and yeah. cost barrier to entry is like financially was um, a struggle. I didn't have a ton of money to like invest to start this. And the, I think the consumers have this concept that we don't pay much for this, but they don't understand the logistics of everything that goes in yeah, yeah, to yeah. getting this product to the shelf. Like they don't, they don't really consider all the costs. 
Um, yeah, that was probably, cost was literally just the biggest hurdle. Right. That was the biggest hurdle. Um, business, like specific wise, trying to get wholesale accounts. Okay. Like, you know, first starting off, the, the hurdles of attempting to like make the first calls, having no clue what to say, yep. not understanding the pricing structure of competitors, and knowing even how to price it. Um, we don't have a good directory that shows us who to even contact for expos. It's yeah, so a huge you, learning. Yeah, what yeah. yeah, networking. It yeah. was literally networking was probably yeah, I guess talking it up with you. Networking was probably the biggest hurdle, like just getting to people and figuring out who I should talk to next. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. What would you say is the most fun part of what you do now? From I mean, it could be anything from just starting out, like you mentioned, hustling around, driving around, delivering juice to. To now where you're at, you know, you have a store, you, you got wholesale accounts, you have multiple brands out there doing well. The, so I don't know why I call this fun, but gratifying is like knowing that I'm helping people change their life. Like that's, that's, okay. that's huge. Like when people come to you and tell you like they had COPD or some kind of breathing issues and now they feel they feel healthier, they can breathe better, they can smell better, they literally smell better, yeah. like the whole nine, like that's that's the most gratifying part. The funnest part is probably having fruit juice. Like honestly, like, <laughs> right. I, get, I get. I mean, I have like unlimited juice now, so yeah, that, yeah. that part's really really cool. Like I can try new stuff all the time, and I don't have to. Whenever you feel kind of froggy, you yeah, make just, your own. Yeah, just yeah. Like a thousand gallon bottle, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you start with? Like, how did you get it started financially to get to where you're at? <laughs> Man, it was a hustle. It was five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks was buying um, like five mil little sample bottles, getting some business cards printed with the website that stated we did the home delivery within like a certain range in our mm -hmm. city. So outside of vaping, what do you do? I mean, outside of work. I mean, I know you personally. You're a hustler. Yeah. I mean, every every time you're awake, you're pretty much working. A little bit of everything, man. I like I'm PS4, I like video games. Um, my kids, big into my kids. Usually nerding out in some way with a computer. Honestly, yeah. that's like my, I'll go in the corner by myself for eight hours and just zone out, nerd out in some kind of way, building a website, learning something. Yes. Yeah. I'm kind of boring in that space, but of course, like bars with yeah. friends, dinner with friends, those mm -hmm. kind of things. Yeah. What's your favorite part about like the expo life? Because I know like it, it can be rough. It is, time, man. You know? it's, <clears throat> the expo life is cool. I like it because it's, it's built for somebody who has hustle. Like yeah. you go in there, you either sink or swim and you have a ton of money on the line. Like all the product, the cost per bottle to manufacture it, the cost to ship it, or the cost for the vehicles and the employees and the hotels and the booths, oh, it's a lot of money. Yeah. And you go in there hoping to like potentially soften that market, that area, and get people around there to know your brand and to hopefully make enough money to like break even, maybe even make some money. Yep. So um, yeah, it's, I, it's a thrill, I guess. It's like you're committed, you know what I mean? Because you already have all your money invested, so you go in there like, Game you face. gotta do something. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I, this industry is by far the coolest industry I've ever been a part of. Everybody is so chill. Like, yep. Everybody is so chill. You're always gonna have a good time. You're gonna have like good conversations, good networking, good food. Like, yeah, yeah. expos are fun. Like, yep, I agree. I, yeah, I love them. They're good. What was your first expo you ever went to as a vendor? Plymouth the Room. Okay. Plymouth the Room in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, it was super intimidating. Like, I don't know if you remember your first expo, but like oh, yeah. anxieties through the roof. Yep. Like it was, it was insane. Um, actually, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't have pulled that one off. Um, really? Yeah. Like it was. I had a label issue last minute, and you guys pulled through for me and hooked it up with the labels. Otherwise, I would have been there with a bunch of bottles that had nothing on them, <laughs> and it wouldn't have worked. And like, we, yeah, it was bad. It was like day of, and I'm like, I have the labels. So yeah. Um, yeah, I always appreciate you guys for that. You guys have always helped out. I appreciate and, that, yeah. Uh, that expo was cool. It, like, it put one, you know, one on the belt, and yep. I felt confident after that to go on to the next one, and we did good, so. First of many, right? Yeah, first of many, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What was the event that you feel did the best for you as far as, you know, you, you went in there, you did what you had to do, you landed wholesale accounts, you know, it was put together, right? Because, I mean, you know there's so many different events. Yeah, yeah. All of them kind of go off a little bit differently. Yeah, and I, I kind of approach them differently, too. Sometimes I don't even vend, I just walk them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, I can walk them with a billboard on my chest, and, you know, that's enough to, like, meet and network with the right people. Yeah. So I've had success in both. Um, they just did a show in Columbus that was really, really good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that show landed a lot of accounts and it was really good. We had, I've done sales trips to the Ohio area before, so mm -hmm. we kind of had a little bit of uh, brand recognition there. Uh, that was good. And uh, ATL, the Atlanta Expo that just happened like two months ago, was yep. really, really good. 
That was a good one. I heard that was a really good one. That was probably the that was probably the best expo just overall. Like size, offerings, attendance from consumers, attendance B2B, B, everything. Yeah. That was the best one I've been to. Okay. Yeah, that was awesome. the best one I've been to. Yeah. So Jay, tell me about this wall behind us. I, mean, so, I know a little bit about it, but I, I need to know the why. Wall's you know. cool, man. So the the goal was uh there was no um Vape shops in our area that kind of had a lounge feel, and none of them really had like a big cloud comp wall. I traveled and did comps, like I was super duper into that's when the Michigan Vape Society really was founded on. Yeah. Was um, you know, traveling and comps and um, vape advocacy. So we did this little wall and chalkboard paint, and one of my customers came in, Sandra Rose, her name's down here, you guys probably can't see it. Uh, okay. she came in and she grabbed the, the chalk, and the goal was just to be able to mark where you hit your cloud at. And she started doodling. She started putting, it was actually right here. She started doing something. And she was like, I wish there was more color. So I pulled out a big thing of chalk. And she just started doing something. Like, what is it? She said, it's called sacred geometry. It's like, we well, do my whole wall. Like, I'll pay you to do this the whole wall. Yeah. So she just came in every time she had a day off and just kept doing it. And now she comes in when we have like a new product drop. Like, she's going to redo uh, one of these sections here all in orange to just show orange lit. And then when all the kids come in and yeah. they do like trick videos and all that stuff, they wear a really cool backdrop. Yeah, absolutely. So, what else do you offer in your store right now? I was looking at your cases. It seems like you got a pretty big variety now. Yeah, man. Um, I felt it was important that I just carried anything that our customers would want that we could bring to the market first, like fidget spinners. I was like, I, I believe I was the first store in Michigan probably to have those, if not one of the first. Yeah. Um, I was I'm a nerd. I followed like, the torque bars when they were first built, the spin space group. I watched it go from like 500 to like 6,000 people. I instantly went and found them and started carrying them. And okay. so I started bringing like those kind of things. Um, you see like all these, all the, the vapors online, they'll take a handshake, it'll be like mod, juice, and a fidget spinner. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, if that's what we're into. Like, cool, I'm gonna get them for you guys. So we have that. I have, um, I have head shop stuff. I have like a lot of different glass. Um, I felt that was important to bring in just because I noticed that that's what our customers were after. Do you that's think that's where it's kind of like the industry might even be merging into is something that's kind of together or do you think it's still going to be more segregated? I think it makes sense for them to be together in some capacity, state specific. Like we're in a state that's not only medical and bed medical, um, we're going into a completely unregulated space. It's just slowly getting there. So as it becomes more prevalent, and uh, more lenient, it just makes sense. Somebody has to offer these products, and a lot of them really merge and cross with the vape products. So yeah, it just, sure. it's just logical to me to have them mm -hmm. and offer them. So we have that stuff, um, you know, other standard stuff, food, snacks, apparel. Mm -hmm. We got big time shirts. We got um, like the lit vape bands and bracelets. We've got okay, these, you these got yeah. hoodies and shirts. We got lit hats. We got, we got, yeah, just a awesome. bunch of apparel stuff too. What's your next move for your company? Um, the next one we'll go to a mansion. Nah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love uh, it. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Um, I, I can say that we have more flavors coming on the lip line. We have a bunch more premium lines that are all coming in. They're going to be coming aggressively back to back. Okay. We're going to release a lot more flavors. Um, <clears throat> are the premium like, lines going to be stuff that you're producing and manufacturing? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah in house stuff. Um, stuff that we've just been kind of holding since before August and waiting to strategically release as we yeah. have this freeze. And um, I want to do some stuff with uh, CBDs as well. I'm a, big, okay. I'm a big advocate and fan of it. Uh, uh, someone who has dealt with anxiety, I felt the effects of it, pain and anxiety both, so I want to incorporate those in my products and stuff. Okay. So that's in the future for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about? Um, try lit, it's lit. That's about what I can say. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank my boys from Mint Vapors for swinging out and spotlighting my store. Uh, I've known these guys for a while, they're friends, and they've helped me get to where I'm at. Uh, look at btvapors.com for our products. Like, share, and comment on this video. They're doing some really good stuff, and I'm 100% behind them. And also, don't forget, like he said, share this with your friends, because we want to showcase everything that happens behind the counter, as opposed to what you see in front of the counter. So, uh, the behind, behind the scenes from Dre today, like, you know, the, some of the struggles and everything. Um, don't forget to comment what shop we should showcase next and uh, I think at this end of the video We're gonna be out of here and we'll uh, see you guys at the next show <laughs> <laughs> I got to